Hello, welcome to Lot Nest Living. Uh, it's one year now since I rebranded all of my design and knitting work and patterns to Lot Nest Living and relaunched as a brand. So to celebrate our anniversary or our birthday, I have invited yourselves, the viewers and followers on Instagram and Facebook to send in some questions. And I have asked my lovely daughter, <laughs> Rhiannon, who is wetting herself with the hilarity of all of this, to put the questions to me so that we can have a, a lovely chat and tell you a little bit more about Lotness Litting and the inspiration behind the work there and maybe a little bit more about me, although I don't know how, how well that's going to go with Rhiannon sitting there. She might try and give away all my secrets. <laughs> so, Secret. Do you have questions for me, sweetheart? <laughs> That's very professional. <laughs> very professional lady. What is your ultimate knitting dream? That is a very timely question. My ultimate knitting dream, um, as Rhiannon probably knows really well, but this will be um, quite good for people who haven't met me in real life. My ultimate knitting dream is to design outfits for the Winter Olympics. To the hats. It's especially the hats. She's, she's heard about the hats before. I'm pretty obsessed by the Winter Olympics um, and I'm watching absolutely every single moment of footage at the moment. And the thing that I like the best is actually when the cameras turn around and pan to the crowd so that I can get um, crowd footage and see all, all the different hats that people are wearing. Because it's an opportunity to get this um, uh, snapshot of basically kind of winter style across all these different cultures. And when else do you get to do that? It's brilliant. And you can do it from the comfort of your own home. So I would just... You wouldn't want to be out there then. Oh, I would love to go. I would absolutely cool. love to go to the Winter Olympics. If I could get to Beijing in 2020, I, that'd be amazing. I would love that. Um, but yeah, to, to design or be part of a design for a Winter Olympics team would be absolutely brilliant. Okay. Uh, who taught you everything? Taught me everything. I was born <laughs> knowing everything, much like you, Rihanna. Um, I don't actually remember being taught how to knit. I was thinking about this to, today when we were out for a walk with um, Grandma earlier. I'm sure that she did teach me, but I don't actually remember crocheted her teaching me. I crocheted first, and I remember when I was in primary school, kind of maybe seven or eight, that I used to make little outfits for my dolls and my teddies. I had a collection of teddies that were about nine, ten of them that lined up on my bed. I had names for them all. I read them stories. I took them in every night, and as part of that caring process, I made outfits for them. God, that's such a new thing to do. Like, <laughs> age 10. Like, I bet they all like jobs and professions, like dreams and aspirations. Well, they had intricate backstories, that's for sure. <laughs> and yeah, I read them stories, I looked after them. So I used to make them things. But then I went to, to high school and stopped all of, all of that because it wasn't it was cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't cool. Um, do, still tinkered with my own clothes and stuff, still chopped things up and, well, and about that. did a bit of. So, as Grandma told you about that, yeah, I was a bit of a nightmare when it came to school uniform. You're a bit of a nightmare for stall. Redesigning, thank you. <laughs> um, and then I rediscovered it when I had you, my angel, because when you, when I was pregnant, I was having a little baby. There was just something that blossomed, <laughs> and I, I just, I wanted you to have something that I made, especially as like your first thing. So I. In the last month of pregnancy, I picked up a crochet hook and crocheted you a little blanket, which we still have, to match your nursery furniture stuff. And we still have all of that. And from that, yeah, that was me knitting and crocheting again as an adult. And you are 17 now. No, I'm not. I'm 16. You're going to be 17 <laughs> very soon. Um, so, I've been, so I've been doing it again for 17 years. But I don't actually remember anybody sitting down and teaching me how to do it. It was more like I was surrounded by it and it was just there and I've absorbed it. And I can't remember not ever knowing how to do it. I think it okay. feels like something I've always known. Uh, your loves and hates. Mm. You have lists about this. I've lists about everything. You have specific lists about I'm this. I'm such a... Oh, God, I'm such a list maker. Loves and hates about knitting, and then not oh, just love. Don't just loves, loves and hates full stop. Loves and hates full stop. Uh, so what I love about knitting and making things in general is more of a a broad kind of love. The fact that yeah. you can do what you want, you can come up with an idea, 
and you can go and make it. Or most often behind my designing is it's like the Frankenstein knitting effect. Like I want the sleeve of that, the neckline of that, the colour of something else, the stitch pattern of something else. There's no, there's no one pattern, even though there are thousands of patterns on Ravelry. I'll have a search, find something, not find anything that suits it. Um, and then that'll be the start of my pattern. And that is what I love. It's, it's just such freedom to be able to say, I want it and I want it my way. Well, that's very you, isn't it? That is very me to be... <laughs> slightly controlling. I just, <laughs> slightly controlling. <laughs> you know what you want. Yes, and I think that's... See, when it comes to women in the way that we describe women, I think if you were a man, you would say that um, I would be described as, you know, precise and, and knowing what I want and having... But you're both because you're a lady. High goals, yeah, but because I'm a female, people say I'm demanding. So, but that's another thing. And what do, what's, what do I hate? Yeah. I hate the knitting police. Uh, like the fashion police? It's kind of like the fashion police. People who sit and especially online and the knitting community online is lovely and fantastic we've got amazing resources but I hate the fact that it also gives an opportunity for people to say things that they wouldn't say in person and pass very kind of quick criticism that takes two seconds to type out um, without really realizing that you know people put a lot of effort a lot of work into it especially when it comes to designers designers take a lot of work and I I've been there I've criticized and I've put my opinions out there so do you regret that no, I don't. No, I don't. I think I try to be constructive in what I say and not personal. And what I dislike is when the criticism has become personal. And there was yeah. on Instagram just recently, there was a case of a designer who put up a really a beautiful pattern, like intricate, complex techniques, work's going on. Just, you know, she's worked, she's put a lot of hours into that. And she's modelling it herself, as you do, because we can't afford models, a lot of us, or we don't wish to use models because it's important to show real people wearing things not that models are not real people but the average person is not that at all um, I'm a very short person and I design you know pretty much around my size and shape so you know I model my things and what upset me and I think upset a lot of people is that some of the comments that were about that photo were about the fact that the person wasn't smiling as if it was the most fantastic day of her life mm. whereas in reality she's she's just showing you a sweater she's outdoors in the cold it's probably not the most smiley fantastic <laughs> day of her life that's not her kind of purpose and it's just the fact that people can throw that out there but as a designer like, I know, oh god she's put hours into that she's put so much work into that and you're not even commenting on the fact that maybe you know you can't see the techniques because of the the pose or something it's just kind of oh cheer up love and, and that's just like that's just not helpful and the other thing the knitting police do is like if you don't do I don't want the knitting police to do like some sort of body out there like they are the knitting police it's not it's just miserable people out in the world <laughs> who want to pass criticism on other people and their hard work and feel like that to, they've got a more special relationship or something going on and it's just really really sad but like I like things like I've, I've liked in the past things like the Fashion Police programme, although that's not on TV anymore at the moment. But it's because I like to look at new fashion and fashion being worn differently. It's not because I want to look at somebody and say, you look bad. You know, maybe you're wearing something in a way that I don't... Like. I wouldn't choose to wear it. I wouldn't yeah. like it. I don't think it's, you know, stylish or showing a design. Well, you do a lot of things that I'm like, oh, that's not very me, but it's very mummy. So I don't Exactly. It like, might not be very you, but it's very me. And I think you have to... There's a place for being more tolerant and it just it makes me sad when I see in any world but particularly in fashion and knitting comments that are not constructive and about the piece of work and comments that are about the person or about the person's choice particularly I, yarn can get a bit funny with people when sometimes it chooses to go off piste with a, a yarn yeah. choice or with an alteration and people can get quite judgy about that and it's it's just such a shame because I love it when people do things to my designs and I think it's, it's brilliant that somebody's yeah. felt confident and the freedom to go and do their own thing. So I don't like it when things get shut down. I don't like the knitting police. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy doesn't like the knitting police. Mummy's round. <laughs> that was bound to get me round to go and talk for an hour about it. Talk about an hour about all your hates, your dislikes. Oh Define yourself by your likes, not your dislikes. Exactly, exactly. Um... Who slash what are your inspirations? It's 
inspiration. Mm. Of course you. Of course you. You're, you're a style inspiration to me because that's... <laughs> Because you do dress differently to me. You make different choices and you put outfits together in a way that I wouldn't choose. And that's because we have very different figures. I'm short and I have the figure of somebody who's had a baby. You are much taller than me now and you haven't had a baby. You're no. far more athletic. So no. you dress differently to me. And Grandma, again, dresses differently to me. And it kind of just it gets me out of my comfort zone and the king of things. And I'm, I'm a real people watcher in that sense. And I like going places where I can look at people but I like tapping into history as well and whenever I'm in Edinburgh I go to the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh it's probably a bit of a home from home it's just a little corner that I like to go to they had the uh, exhibit of Pringles um, the knitwear business school model for them oh brilliant His family they were like a ginger family and um, they lived in like a croft and they're all like vegan and pretty cool he was in year 13 when I was in year 9 uh-huh. and they did a campaign thing for Pringles they used to live in I think you used to then they got abuse for being like vegan and different and that's people were like you can't be so they left the island yeah that's a shame but yeah I like there's a lot of textile stuff in the Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh there's a lot of choice in there and they did a, a design retrospective fairly recently. That's probably touring now. Um, one of the people that was featured in there was Jean Muir, and she has been a massive inspiration to me. She, um, well, she started off designing at Jaeger, which is a British design company, um, and then she went on to form her own company um, with the support of her husband, I think it was. So, And then she had her own company from the late 90s through to... Was it up until the late, late 90s but she had her own company for a long time and she had a very she was known for kind of doing black dresses and then keeping things quite structural but she actually worked in a really interesting colour palette she worked quite heavily with designers she liked kind of rich colours golds, mauves, things like that she was very precise about what she wanted from her fabric um, and that she was just always in the the background of kind of fashion magazines that I was reading, things on TV. They'd always feature of her. And then when she passed away, um, there were a couple of documentary programs just looking at the scale of her work and her influence. And it was then I think that I realised how much she had seeped into British culture and British design culture. And I think particularly if you look at the work of Alexander McQueen and the Alexander McQueen label as it now is. Um, and look at their structural work and development. You can see the threads of this going back through time, and, and I, I love that. And structure is something that I would like to get into a bit more with my designing um, because it could be something that's very interesting in knitwear. So we'll see where that goes. Any advice to you, knitters? Oh, God. <laughs> mm. New knitters. It's been such a long time since I was a new knitter. Um, I guess to to be brave and to be bold um, and not to feel that you have to knit like everybody else and make things like everybody else not to and not to get too disheartened when things don't go right because even people who've been knitting for a long time and we've said you know, that I've been making things for X number of years there are still times I was I still make swatches and everybody should make swatches but there are still times when I rip things back donate things to charity try things three, four or five times um, stretch myself try and learn new things Um, one of the things that you could do if you're a knitter who's kind of just wanting to stretch yourself and do something different is look for patterns on Ravelry that haven't been knitted very often so when you do your search don't start on page one of the search start on the last page of the search and work forward because if you're looking for a scarf you know a scarf is a scarf and if you're open to what you're going to make if you start at the back you'll make something that hasn't been made as often and I think that is more likely to stretch you and just to expose you to different things as a knitter just you know expose yourself to as many different ideas as possible I quite often I'll try a pattern specifically to try a technique you know I mean I like always want a finished object from it because I can't afford not to I don't have an unlimited yarn budget unfortunately um 
but yeah just keep keep stretching yourself and pushing yourself and don't be put off by the fact that you've had to rip something back because everybody has to do it at some point all the time all I the do time it for you. you do it for yeah in the cases where it's particularly emotional you have done it for me sometimes haven't you i can't remember the last time you had to do that well last time you have to look at the water oh okay <laughs> super helpful <laughs> maybe i should can't start paying you by the yard you can just give back. it to the cat can I have do it rip it off I'm not sure I'd be able to re-knit it if I get it's it back from the cat afterwards <laughs> cat distractions okay next question uh, your favourite heel yeah, what did you think this question was about Rihanna shoes shoes <laughs> I mean what's your favourite heel Rihanna I don't know, I have like two pairs of heels. <laughs> you don't need heels, you're too tall. You I say that, but I'm considerably short compared to people my ear. Oh, you're taller than me. No, that's because you're short. Petite. Keep going, Daddy okay. says. Okay, favourite heel. Um, my favourite sock heel, which this will be, has been sent in by, by um, somebody. Um, my favourite sock heel is called the Eye of Partridge heel. Pretty much a standard sock heel. Um, so it's boring. I saw it. It's basically you knit and you slip and you knit and you slip, and you do that on every row. So you end up because you're slipping every alternate stitch, and then on the way back you're knitting the one you slipped and slipping the one you knit. Basically, you get kind of double the amount of stitches in a small space. So it makes for quite a cushy, dense heel, which personally I think is more comfortable as a sock heel. But I also find more durable because there's a bit more kind of yarn basically between you and the shoe. And so all of the socks that I've knitted for you have that heel in it if you care to take a look at them. Although I've not actually made socks for you for a wee while because no. your feet started growing really quickly, didn't they, at one point? Yeah. Like, they slowed down a bit now. They've not grown in years. I think actually they've got smaller. Okay. Oh, well, you could start wearing the socks fresh. again. <laughs> you could start re wearing some of the socks then. I'll make you some socks again so you can see the heel. Okay. Favourite yarn? Yarn. That's a hard one. That's like being asked to choose your favourite child. Um, well, your only child, therefore your favourite child and your favourite child at once. Yeah. Um, <laughs> favourite yarn. I think my favourite... Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 yeah. Am I... Does that mean yarn and me are, like, on the same level of love? Aww. Are you sure? Yeah. I do, I do enjoy yarn a lot though, Rhiannon. We have a, at least one room that's just currently full of it. So, And you have your own room. I have my own room. <laughs> well, there you go, then. Equal. Equal with the yarn. Um, and which one of all the yarns is my favourite? Me. Yes, the Rhiannon yarn. Oh, we should dye some and call it Rhiannon. She's my hair. Yeah, the, yeah I love the colour of your hair. Um, favourite yarn, favourite yarn. The one that I designed with the most and the one which I knit with the most is a four ply. And chunky. I don't use chunky and no. I don't use chunky very often because I am number one because I'm petite and so the number of stitches that it would take, particularly in jumpers, the number of stitches it would take to do a shoulder for me if I was using really chunky yarn would only be about six or seven and I've got a really big jumper, the Eskimo um, Drops jumper that I knitted that's like that. It's really, really warm, it knits up really, really quickly but because there's such a small number of stitches there and it's particularly noticeable on shoulders, it makes me look like a child dressed <laughs> up in a jumper whereas thinner yarns like a four ply, the stitches are small, they're practically invisible, there's more of them across places like the shoulder. So it's a lot more subtle and the, and I don't feel like it's wearing me quite so much. <laughs> and the other reason why she, then she's full flight is for reasons of economy. Again, being a petite person, I can just about get a cardigan or a sweater out of two skins of four ply. So it's really good value for money for me on a budget. And I think when you're shopping for nice yarns from independent dyers, you you can do more with two skins of four ply personally than one skin of chunky which you might only be able to do a hat or only just be able to do a cowl um, and if you wanted to do a jumper from the chunky or the aran you're talking nine ten skins and it just becomes so much more expensive i mean there's there are pros and cons um 
especially when it comes to yarn types as well. I you know, like particular the fibres over others, but they've all got their different qualities. But that's why you'll find more of my designs in a four ply than the chunky generally. All the questions. Oh, so you got any more questions for me? Your favourite cat. Don't I have a got a favourite cat? Yeah you do. No, I don't. Yeah you do. No. Who's your favourite cat? I don't have a favourite cat. I have a favourite cat. You, you can't choose between the cats. Freya's my favourite cat. Sorry, Barney. It's okay. Daddy, who's your favourite cat? <laughs> we don't have a favourite cat. Right, are we done with the questions then? Yeah. Okay, well, we will say goodbye to everybody. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, Wave bye bye to the nice people at home now then. <laughs> Thank you very much for helping me today. And if you would like me to answer some more questions in the future, just send me some messages, um, drop me an email, make a comment on the Facebook page or on the Instagram, and we'll do another one of these next time Rhiannon's home from school for the holidays. <laughs> Yay! Thank you.